Are we on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was stunned for a second. I was thinking, you know, a friend of mine's daughter wanted a shout out, and that's a very hard name. So I was thinking, I uh, caught me off guard. Tranya. 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 No T. R. Tranya. Tranya. There you go. Tran. Tran. Tranya. I put a D in front. Of Hello, me. sweetheart. Listen, I'm having trouble with your name. It's like I got marbles in my mouth. Tranya. <laughs> That's a cute name. I'm going to change it to... Uh, Ronnie. Ronnie. There you go. Okay, Ronnie, yeah. <laughs> Gangsters change everybody's name. So from now on, you're, to me, you're Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to make a mess out of it all the time. All right, guys. Listen, we're, here we are back again. Love you guys. Been loving your comments. Um, all kinds of uh, nice comments and stuff and good questions. There's some questions we didn't ask from last week. We're going to start off with them. That's what we do. So let's go. Let's start with uh, whatever questions. Okay. Hey, guys. So we're going to start out with just some shout outs because people gave you some envelopes last week that we didn't acknowledge. So we have Benny the Bull, Richard C., Bo. And then Javier Mejia said he and Mateo say hello from Tampa, Florida. They were watching you. Salute. Um, Mikey likes it. Sammy, I don't blame you for what happened in the past. No one in their right mind would do life for some guy who couldn't shut his mouth. Now we get into the questions. Bazer asks, how is your relationship with Castellano? You know, for a while it was very, very good. I uh, took a liking to me because I understood business and I understood how to run unions. Castellano had a thing for construction. He loved the construction business. Um, and he made me uh, run, you know, quite a few things. Not that I ran them, but I, you know, listened to him and went, gave messages and put things in order. And uh, he valued my opinion on different things. The concrete club, I was sent into major meetings, and he valued my opinion on these things. But it was very good. There was a situation with my brother-in-law that turned me were against him a little bit. And then there was the thing with John Gotti, which really iced the cake for the whole thing as far as I was concerned with Castellano. Great. Billy Ryan asks, or says, hey Sammy, could you talk about experiences with the Lucchese Jersey captain, Anthony Tumac Asaturo? And do you have any Eddie Lino stories? Well, Tumac was a captain in the uh, a Lucchese family and uh, eventually the, that crew had trouble with the uh, gas piper was the underboss and Vicar Muso was the boss and uh, he wound up flipping uh, there's another guy in the crew Tommy there was a couple of guys in that crew who flipped the whole thing fell apart uh, I didn't know Tumac. I did time with this guy Tommy for a couple of years in a, a wet sack unit and uh, I didn't know too much about them, but they were pretty strong in there. I think they called them, I think they were part of the Jersey Boys or something like that. Uh, they did a movie about them, something like that, but I didn't know them personally. Like I said, I did time with one of them and Tumac. I never really met him, but I heard he was a good guy, a decent guy, tough guy, but uh, he got in trouble with the bosses, whatever it was. And uh, instead of fighting, he flipped. Great, thank you. Joe Rod, what if O'Neill had been made the boss over Paul? Well, Neil died of cancer, so I think he would have died anyway, whether he was the boss or under boss. Um, he decided it was his decision for Paul to be the boss and for him to be the under boss like he was under Carlo Gambino. And um, Paul accepted that. Carlo Gambino, before he died, recommended that Paul be the boss, and Neil went along with that. There was a big Nino, a uh, big meeting at uh, Nino Gaggi's house. Uh, a lot of guys, uh, his nephew was there, and a bunch of guys. So I don't know. It's a tough call. There are two different individuals. Paul was a racketeer. Uh, Neil was a gangster. So it's hard. It's really hard to tell. I think it would have been Neil was a great guy. Everybody loved him. So I think there would have been uh, 
And the same thing with Paul. Paul, everybody liked him in the beginning. He got greedy. Some other shit happened with him. And he made some bad moves. And uh, so from being well-liked, he was hated. Okay. Gorilla Zoe. Sammy, did you ever have any dealings with Fat Cat from Queens? If we're talking about Fat Cat Nichols, a black guy, I did time with him. I was in prison with him for about three or four years. Um, guy's a real tough guy. Uh, it, you know, I, they called him Fat Fat Cat. When I was in prison, he was not fat at all. He was muscled out like there was no tomorrow. Um, I used to jog sometime with my friend Fogarty behind Fat Cat, and he had calves this big. And I don't mean fat. They were pure muscle. And we used to awe at that. I used to tell Fogarty as we were jogging, look at this fucking calves, bro. I mean, it was enormous. And he was really a good guy when I did time with him. I got along with him great. He had a table um, with a bunch of black guys. The next table was my table with Philly and Eddie and a few guys right next to him. So we had a, a, a really good uh, understanding. When they would steal stuff from the kitchen, they would give us uh, some stuff and vice versa. Um, uh, he got pinched again while he was in a witness shooting. I understand he's out now. Um, I have a couple of black friends, uh, uh, Brian Glaze, who knows him and knows of him. And Brian Glaze was talking to me about him that he read it before and whatever. I, I'm not in that whole situation, but I know I knew him real good. There was a few guys, a guy named Bo who was with him, It was in his crew, it was very close to him in prison, still with him all the time. Um, Fat Cat was a good guy, I liked him a lot. Great. Um, Tubble of Us, Sammy, what's the biggest loss you saw John take with sports betting? Was he ever winning? It seems like he couldn't pick a pony to save his life. <laughs> You know, there's a story that I did one time where John lost 350000 in one week, and he didn't have enough money to pay the bookmakers, so he was, get, you know, getting money. I was holding money that comes in, he came to me, asked for, for the money. Um, he didn't tell me it was for gambling. He told me he was going to give a, a loan out, which is bullshit. John, they, it wasn't a loan shock. He never gave out money. And somebody had told me that he lost 350. Matter of fact, it was Joe Watts, and uh, and I gave him 125,000. I was holding his end. I would turn in once a month. So this happened before the end of the month. It was actually a low number of 125, and I gave it to him. Um, and listen, degenerate gamblers, they can't win. When they win, they want to parlay and they want to bet. I've seen him play football. You know, you bet all the scores, the under and over and all that thing. He bet the entire fucking sheet, every single game. You can't win. If you're going to be a degenerate, and they don't want to win. John liked to lose, I think, and curse God and everybody, blaming them for his losses. Um, I was there one day when a guy who owned horses, race horses, came into the club, talked with him, um, told him he's got a horse coming up in the future, great horse, wasn't ready to win yet, but in a couple of weeks he would give him word that he's ready to win, and um, he left. John bet 5000 on the horse, not to win, to come in second or something like that. And I had told him, a couple guys told him, John, he's, the guy's the owner. They don't even want him to win. They just put him in this race. He's not going to win. He said, nah, that's bullshit. Watch, he wins. He's bullshitting us. He bet. I think the horse came in almost dead last. And... Uh, so that's John, and that's a gambler. It's not just John. It's everybody who's a degenerate gambler. They they just gamble and gamble and gamble until they're broke and borrow and this and that. Every gambler I ever knew did had that same pattern. It's it's a fucking disease like alcoholism or drugs. Gambling is a, a disease. Yeah, it absolutely is. Okay, we have Larry Lapper. Who's the worst New York boss ever to you? The worst boss, New York boss. Um, you know, 
As it turns out, I, I really have to say, it's not because I'm mad or anything like that. I, I'd have to say John Gotti. The way he conducted himself, he wrecked half the mafia. Every single boss wanted to kill him. There's not a boss. Even the guy he thought was close with him, Joe Messina, got caught on tape, and his tape said, this fucking asshole is wrecking the mafia. The way he dressed it, it acted, and stuff like that. Now, he wasn't... There was bosses. I'm not saying that he was the worst boss um, because uh, he did horrible things. I mean, he did stupid things. But he had a better personality and a better in, uh, than other bosses. So, uh, but as far as running a family, uh, he made every mistake you can make. So, it, I think history is going to show he's probably one of the worst, if not the worst, boss ever. Thank you. Ryan Evans asked, Hey, Sammy, do you think Gotti was planning to kill you? Is that why you cooperated? That's what a judge said. I knew that he was planning to kill me when uh, when I got arrested. Um, that's not why I cooperated, uh, but I found out in little at a time um, it did come out in federal reports and things like that. Um, and I, I, you know, I got a word from Nikki Scarfo called me down to Jersey one time and told me he feels there's a problem. And uh, he, he said, Sammy, if you have a problem with him, bro, me and you did things together. I got your back, bro. You need me, I'll come down with my whole fucking family on your side. So, uh, and uh, a couple of guys, true little innuendos. I didn't pick it up on the street. I was, I, I, he was my boss. He was my friend. I was loyal. I didn't like some of the things he was saying, but yeah, I didn't put it together then. Or I would have killed him. Listen, I was a stone cold killer in the street. I would have killed him. But uh, um, I, more, more and more came out after we were pinched. He got caught on tapes that verified all of the stuff that he was doing. But that's not the reason I killed him. Uh, I killed him. Uh, that's not the reason I cooperated. cooperated. At the end, he wanted to dump the case, the weight on me. Um, there's facts to that. I know some people contradict it, but there's a lot of facts, FBI reports, tapes, bugs, everything. So that's the reason I quit. It broke my heart. I loved the guy. I would have done anything for him. Every trial he had, I was uh, threatening witnesses, rigging the case for him to win. I mean, and that's a fact, too. There's, you know, people who got arrested for it, and, and they wound up cooperating and said, yeah, Sammy bribed me or did this or threatened me or whatever. So... When you love somebody and they betray you like that, it was uh, it was heartbreaking for me. And I literally, I said, fuck the mob with all this bullshit. It got worse and worse, the mob, to me, as far as I was concerned. And fuck him, and I switched sides. It became a chess game. John was trying to kill me. He was trying to dump the case on me and Frankie and uh, Lucasio. And he was playing checkers while I was playing chess. Got it. Okay, we have just a couple more questions. Uh, Ryan Brown says, Sammy, salute. I've gained so much knowledge from you. I almost possibly caught an assault charge one night. Luckily, a friend who did six and a half years in prison talked sense into me. Company you keep really helps. Sammy, how bad did Jackie D'Amico's hate his name or his nickname, Nose? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he hated that name for that reason. I mean, uh, he did have a little bit of a schnoz, you know, but um, I don't think, I mean, I, mean he, I don't know if he hated it for that, but he, he had some sort of disease or something. He used to wear white gloves um, that uh, John uh, abused the shit out of him all the time. He wasn't a real, t he was a loyal guy to John, but he wasn't a tough guy. It, it bothered John. And matter of fact, one day I said, John, 
he, you made him a captain. You're abusing him in front of people. If you don't want him to be a captain, bring him down, put him under somebody as a soldier, but don't abuse him in front of everybody, bro. It, it, looked, it looks worse for you than it does for him. So I, I think there was a lot of things he didn't like. Um, he wasn't a tough guy or anything like that. Uh, I think he, he got, I got a ring off him, a diamond ring. Um, he was working in, with jewelry a lot. Um, he was a meek guy, uh, not a bad guy. For a while, they thought he was an informant because on a murder case, he copped out to three years sentence. Now, I'm gonna clear it up. He was not an informant. The government, after I had cooperated, came to me about a case that he was arrested for the murder. Um, and I told him I was involved in the murder. He was not involved in the murder. And I was gonna testify for him with his lawyer if his lawyer asked me to testify. When the government heard that, they said, okay, Sammy, that's the truth. That's the truth. What do I got to do? Why? I mean, he don't like me. I don't like him that much. And uh, they went to him, and they offered him a three-year plea to get a conviction and wipe it out. So he wasn't an informant because he got the three years. It was actually me in the background. I wasn't actually doing him a favor. I'm not looking for credit. And they knew that I was going to be a witness for him against the government, they caved, they gave it up. Okay, we have Bo. Love from Australia, brother. How many made guys are alive today, approximately, and how many members were there nationwide in your day? Well, across the nation, I don't know. I don't know about families outside of New York. I can tell you that uh, the Gambino and the Genovese family were the biggest families. Uh, we had approximately 300 and something uh, made guys in each family. The smaller families like the Colombo and Lucchese and even the Bonanno, they had 100 and something, 115. I think I heard Michael Franchi say that they had 115. He would know he was in the Colombo family. And and I believe he's 100% right because I was in the Colombo family as well. So you're talking about three, six, nine, and six, about about 15, 1,600 made guys in New York. Now, every single guy has associates with him. So the associates go to, in the thousands. So when you're talking about the mafia in New York, who they know, how many people they hooked up with, it's in the thousands, like oh. tens of thousands maybe. That's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Okay, last question. Pablo, what's your favorite mafia movie and who played your character the best? Well, The Godfather 1 and 2 have got to be my favorite mafia movies. Growing up, I looked at it, I was, it, 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 it was just like, not only the mafia, it was like Italian people, the weddings, all of that stuff. You know, it was like my watching my family at a wedding. So that was my favorite. As far as playing me, I don't think any particular movie had somebody who justified how I am or what I was like. Now, I've heard a lot of people, and now that I'm in show business myself, you have to, Alec Baldwin once told me, you have to have the it to play somebody. You have to really research them. You have to be with them. Now, I'm working on a movie, The Johnny Keys. When they're going to make the movie, I'm already told you're going to have to sit with the director, the guy who plays you, the guy who plays the other part, and they want to see, like, now I talk, I use my hands a lot. So the actor's got to sit with me for not an hour or two, for days, and hear how I talk, how I think when I get mad, when I'm not mad, when I'm joking, so he can feel me and become me. That's an actor's job. 
And they could do it really, really good if they do that, especially if you get an A-grade actors. I get in the, 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 the Johnny Keys movie, the guy who's going to play me is an A-list actor, and the guy who plays Johnny Keys is going to be an A-list actor. So I think that's going to be something that portrays me better. I'm also talking to somebody where I'm going to do a scripted show, a very powerful guy, good guy in Hollywood, does beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and he's told me the same thing. So the guys who are going to play me or the guys who are in my crew, I'm going to talk to the actors, you know. So uh, I don't think anybody justified, you know. And some of the things I saw were about me were true, and some weren't. It's, I, you know, when I look at it, I didn't say that or do that or whatever. So. Okay, Awesome. Real quick, um, shout out to everybody that's in chat right now. We see everything coming through. Everybody hit the like button. And now I am passing it over to my beautiful hostess with the mostest, Yay. Anna. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you see his face light up, chat? See? Love you, Sammy. Um, can we remind our viewers to go ahead and sign up for the captain because that subscription contest is winding down on the 19th. Sammy's going to live stream from our thing.tv platform and pick the winners. Right. And I'm picking them out of this jar, right? Could they see this jar? Oh, yeah. All right. So out of this jar, I'll pick the winners out of there. I'll do that live and uh, we'll have some fun with that. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, years ago, it would be rigged. I'll, I'll give you my word, it's not rigged. I'm going to go in there, I'll be blindfold, and uh, it'll, it'll be legit, uh, a legit pick. That's awesome. I just wanted to ask a question about um, when you guys are talking about the gambling. Wasn't Michael Jordan's dad like a really bad gambler? And I think he got mixed up with, there was a rumor that he had owed the mob money or something crazy like that. There was a whole bunch of people. I mean, yeah, there was, you know, even guys who bet with the, with the mob and stuff like that, basketball players, football players, you name it, there was people, you know, jockeys when they had the horses and stuff like that. So a lot of things, and a lot, not all the time, baseball games were, were slightly rare and uh, so there was a lot a lot of people there was some baseball players I forgot his name he lost uh, he got thrown out of baseball he didn't get into the Hall of Fame and it wasn't so much that he was taking bribes but he was betting and when you're in the fold there, you're not supposed to be betting. Um, but, you know, a boxer, if I was a boxer and I thought I was going to win, I would bet on myself to win. Mm -hmm. and it gives me more incentive, incentive to... Is it Pete Rose? Pete Rose. Pete Rose. And the guy really deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, Pete Rose. So he gambled. He bet on himself to win. He didn't take a dive. He didn't do anything like that. He just bet on himself to win. So there it is. what are you going to do? Bet on, see, when you bet on yourself to lose and you throw the game, that's illegitimate. Nice. Thank you, Sammy. Juan Tapia in the super chat with a nice envelope for you. Hey, Sammy, good to see you again, my friend. Quick question, bro. Were you ever into music? Do you use music in your daily life to relax or motivate yourself? And if you do, what's your favorite band or music that you like to listen to? I really do that. I, I sit down sometimes with a cup of coffee, a cigar. I listen. I like uh, jazz, rhythm and blues. I love that. Especially, uh, I look at some. There's a scene like it's raining, and I listen to that music at the same time. They play it the simultaneously. I'm trying to do that on my site. I'm trying to get somebody where we can make that. Um, it's a great relaxation. I don't remember the names of the bands or or the group or the song even um but uh, yeah i enjoy listening to that kind of music you know i a lot of guys tell me you don't listen to rap i don't i would you know what i do with rap when i work out that beat and that 
motivates me and it's a great stuff for me to work out to it it pumps me up but to sit and relax i like rhythm and blues and jazz some oldies sinatra d and all that stuff and nice and low in the background and chilling out so uh, and it and brings me back in time memories and thoughts i met sinatra i never met d martin but i met sinatra and a, a bunch of the people there um so i i like that kind of music that's awesome whose eyes are bluer yours or sinatra's i, I guess sinatra's but <laughs> mine is sometimes blue and sometimes green it depends on what i'm wearing you know i've got people said your eyes are green and some people said, no, your eyes are blue. It's, it's, it depends, I guess. But it's a bluish, greenish, and it depends on what you wear, how it uh, you know, reflects or something. Mm-hmm. So I've been called both. Nice. Thank you, Sammy. Polly C, C in the Super Chat. Hey, Sammy, love and respect from Boston. I read that Nino Gaggi was very secretive and quiet. Do you have any stories about him, how he carried himself? Also, where did he stand on the Castellano hit? He, he knew nothing about the Castellano hit. He was a very tough bastard. Um, and he was secretive and quiet. Um, he was a lot involved in a lot of work. And the crew, his crew under him, was Roy DeMeo and them, the murder machine. So he was a dangerous dude. Wow. Thank you, Sammy. Um, Tube Lovers. Hey, Sam. Why did John shelve Bobby Biscaccia? Biscaccia? Does that sound familiar? Bobby Biscaccia? Then the, the name sounds as you got it twisted. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I th- I think I, is this guy a guy who was a guy from uh, Jersey? I think eventually he made him a captain or something. He shelved him. I don't know why. I think that happened after we went to prison and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that's who it is. I think that's who you're talking about. Yeah. The name sounds a little different the way you're pronouncing it. Mm-hmm. Then I heard it, so and I can't think of the name mm-hmm. the, the right way. Bobby, uh, yeah. but it's close. I think that's who it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not sure why he did what he did. Okay. Thank you, Sammy. John Ball is in the chat. Uh, he's got a super chat for you. Hey, Sammy, you ever hear any rumors about Trump having ties to the families? Well, I, I did things. I, you know, Trump w- was a tremendous, a, a tremendous builder. I'm going to give you one, a couple of stories with Trump. He's a tremendous builder. They came. They were trying to put an ice skating ring in New York when I was younger. I mean, they worked on it for years and could not get it done. Typical Trump said, you give me X amount of dollars, which was not a lot, I'll get it done in a month, two months, so stuff like that. They gave him, and he did it. He pulled it off, but here's how he did it. Instead of companies over here in New York, I know, in New York, he went to Canada. The people who actually make these ice skating rings and deal with them all the time brought them in, got it done like in no time flat and for the short amount of money that they gave him. So he pulled off a miracle. Now, he was, his security force around him was ex-FBI agents all the time. And we knew that. I knew that. A couple of times I tried to push on him a little bit, give him some pressure with the unions and stuff and uh, try to make him work with us. He wouldn't budge. He just, we couldn't get him, I couldn't. And then I said, listen, if we push too much, his security team is gonna know, we're gonna go to jail, fuck it, pass him up, leave him alone. And uh, Eddie Garofola, not my brother-in-law, the other one, they call him the chink. Uh, he did a job for him. I think the demolition for the, for the Trump Tower, did a job for him, but that doesn't mean he was with us. Uh, you know, he probably didn't even know who the, who was who. So I, I don't think he I, he knew guys. Listen, he's not a stupid guy. He knew who was who and what the hell was going on, but he avoided stuff. Um, unions. He was a union contractor, so he did it legit. So he could you couldn't give him pressure that way. 
he was a pretty cagey, smart guy, yeah. uh, successful. And I, I, I could never reach him, and I never heard too many stories. You know, you'll have a guy who maybe, I bunked into him once in a lobby in uh, Atlantic City, and I shook his hand, and somebody introduced me, I shook his hand. He don't know me. He probably wouldn't know who the fuck I am. But I did meet him once, he was with a couple of broads. And uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know if he was actually hooked up with the mafia. I never really heard that. And I think I would have known, because I was—he's building right under my nose, and it would have been—well, it would have been beautiful for me, because those are big projects he was working on. I could have made a ton of money, and not to push him, you know, or, you know, doing anything like that. I would have did the job successfully, and I could have been a big help to him. But he wasn't looking for that. What kind of message, like when you say um, use the, I, I pushed him a little bit using the unions, like what does that look like? Like he got a message or? Either way, he gets a message in other ways. All of a sudden, um, a, a contractor don't want to bid. You know, we'll have different contractors. He was a smart, smart guy, like I said. So let's say he normally deals with these two, three contractors. So now I might bring my guy in. I talk to his con subcontractors and tell them, you go in at this number high, you go in at this number way high, and you tell them you're too busy to bid the job. So his guys, he sees, the, he knows what the numbers are, what they're supposed to be. Now he sees these guys have very high numbers and his favorite guy is not doing the job. And all of a sudden, everything's getting very unionated. Unions are breaking balls. Everybody's breaking balls. He's not a stupid guy. He realizes somebody's pushing on him. Now, whether he talks to Bobby Sasso with the union, uh, you know, that's how we did it. So in normal cases, um, uh, if a guy, I didn't care about the guy, and he would talk to Bobby Sasso and say, you know, you're going to hurt me with the union. You got to shit the uh, shop steward there. The Bobby Sasso would tell him, they would call me the little guy. I'm small. And, you know, the little guy bid a job for you. Did he get it? Oh, no, no. He knows right away. The fucking little guy's breaking my balls here. So I'll say, no, no, but I got a job coming out in another couple of months. He, he's going to get the job. Let him bid it. And everybody backs off him. So that's pressure. We don't threaten. I, I don't. I don't go there and threaten. Give me a new job. I don't do that shit. I, I use the unions, coalitions, everything to put Trump, you know, pressure on the guy, Trump, or anybody else. But the, Trump was a little dangerous to put that kind of pressure because if he complained in there to he knew politicians, ex-FBI agents, it's a dangerous place to fuck around. So I backed away from that. And I never heard, I mean, he did little favors from what I heard, but I don't think he was hooked up with anybody. Interesting. I wonder if his dad was, or what kind of, what, his dad was kind of gangster-esque. Yeah, yeah, well, that goes back before my time, so I really couldn't answer about that. Interesting. Thank you, Sammy. Um, Ryan Brown is back in the super chat. Um, Sammy, I had a friend who did six and a half years in state prison. Is that the one we read? That's the one I read oh, that's it. Oh, Ryan Brown. He, it's the same um, super chat. Um, Ryan, we love you. Um, his exact words were, Ryan, you're not built like that. I thanked him because it definitely would not have been worth it. He was going to beat somebody up, and he didn't do it. That's good, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that was a good move. I mean, I guess, I, you know, when you beat somebody up in prison or you do something crazy, you're going to go in the hole and you're going to do time in the hole. So, I mean, you hear these stories about that one shot and somebody hits a brick wall and they're dead. It's a murder charge now. You know, it's from an assault charge. You just never know. Right. You know? Right. It's terrible. Um, Kadir, in the super chat, um, I read that without you, Gotti couldn't get the stamp from the Brooklyn Gambinos. They didn't respect or mess with John in BK. BKJs, is that right? BK, is that right? I don't get the question. I know, neither do I. Um, I read that without you and DeChico. Gotti couldn't get the stamp from the Brooklyn Gambinos that they didn't respect or mess with John in Brooklyn. Is that right? 
Oh, without a doubt. Listen, John was in trouble with Paul, the boss, the families. We were in trouble. He came to me and Frankie for help. Now, we were the power crews, his crew, my crew, Frankie's crew, a few other crews. And uh, if we didn't join him and help him, he, he, we would have been against him. So he could have never, never went forward. Listen, they fucked up. They were dealing drugs. They got caught. You're not supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. He, uh, they were the tapes. They were bad mountain bosses and under bosses from different families. He had a serious, serious problem. And if he would have had me and Frankie and you can't fight the whole, the whole thing alone. You just can't. It's impossible. So you're going to wind up fighting the commission, people in Italy, the Westies. He would have got slaughtered. But it was, wasn't was just me and Frankie. It was me, Frankie, Joe Piney, the Gunzier betrayed Paul, Joe Gallo, um, his crew, John's crew. It became powerful enough to fight off the world. And that's why we went forward with it. Nice. Thank you, Sammy. Um, DK, I'm oh, sorry, Reza MP, um, with a very generous envelope for you in the super chat with the Salute Boss. Thank you so much. Um, we get a lot of questions, Sammy. Um, people get a little confused about the um, the Alley Boys. Can you describe or give us the difference between the two Alley Boys? Well, I guess you're talking about my Gumbada Alley Boy um, was godfather to my daughter. Um, and he was with the Genovese family. The other Alley Boy is Alley Boy Persico Jr. Um, he was Carmine Persico's son. He was in the Colombo family, and he was a captain, and he went to prison. I, I, I believe he's still in prison. He's doing a life sentence. Um, so they were two different guys, two different families, two different ages. Alley Boy Persico, when I was with the Colombo family, was younger than me. Alley Boy was a little older than me, so there's a big t uh, age difference with the two of them. But I know people get that mixed up, but uh, that's what the difference is. Different families, mob families, mm -hmm. different ages, um, and that's basically the difference between them. Nice. Thank you, Sammy. Ryan Brown, back in the super chat. Um, was there any guys that got made that just had you scratching your head? Like, how the f did they get made? Absolutely. I mean, and not only me, but there's a lot of guys who scratch their head. Um, Louis de Bono was one of them. I had trouble with him. His father, years and years ago, the story was that the father paid off to get his son made. He didn't belong in the fucking life. He was the worst. There's a lot of guys like that that didn't fit. Uh, jo the old man, Johnny Rizzo. Johnny Rizzo, there was two of them. Johnny Rizzo Sr., who was a good guy. He was with the Gambino family. Helped me out a lot in life many, many times when I was in trouble. Um, and he's got a son, Johnny Rizzo Jr. Um, now, he didn't want to make his son or Louis Melito because Louis Melito was with him. Um, I got Louis Melito made. Um, later on, before he died, the old man called me in to a meeting. He was sick, and he said, Sammy, do me a favor. Make my son Johnny Rizzo Jr. So I told him, I give him my word, I'll work on it. He died, and I did work on it. Eventually, I got him made which I think was a mistake. But I'm not going to talk about him because his daughter, uh, Ramona Rizzo, is mm -hmm. like a niece to me. She's super tight with my daughter. I don't want to talk about her father and her family. and um, So I'm going to just stop it at that point. Oh, Ramona, yeah. Mob Wives, right, with, with yeah. Karen? Yeah, yeah. she's beautiful. And she's always yeah, Gorgeous. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, she did a, I saw her on Instagram today. And I said, you don't want to get old? <laughs> I was teasing her. So I, lo I love her. She's, she's my baby. She's like a daughter to me. That's awesome. Ryan Brown is back in the super chat. Um, and I just lost it. It was a thing about Shylocks. Dang it. I'll get it. 
Thank you. Thank you, Amina. Um, let's see. Dean Maloney, um, do you have any Danny Green stories? Who? Who the fuck? Danny Green? Danny Green. Danny Green. Dean Maloney, I don't know what... Who Where is he are. from? What is, what is, is he a mob guy in a family? The name is... I know there was a Green um, in the... In the, the Cavacanti family, um, I, I don't think his name was Danny. I, thought, I think it was another name, Joey or some bullshit, Dan, Joey Green or something like that. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you can tell me what family or, you know, if you had a position, right now it's not ringing a bell for me. Okay. Dean, let us know in the chat. Uh, Kay Spatz in the super chat. Did you know Nick Spatarella from the Shalimar on Staten Island? I know the Shalimar. I, I'm not sure if I know Nick. That's my dad, Nicky Papers. Nicky Papers? I'm going to go get the papers. Get the papers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I know. I'm not sure. I know the Shalimar. What street? Where, where was the, the, the Shalimar? Okay, Spats, what street is that? Sammy's asking. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, Jay Marie, hey Sammy, how do the New York families divide territory? That's a really good question. We don't really divide territories. New York belongs to the five families. Always did, always will be. Um, there's actually some people from New Jersey, the Cavacanti, small amount of them come in, not too much. Um, and it depends on where your people are. You, you don't own a territory. In other words, if you have a club on a street, an avenue, 86th Street and 16th Avenue, or whatever it is, you, and you have a club. Now, I'm not supposed to open a club right next to you, obviously. But if I'm a block or two blocks away, there's clubs and bars and, you know, they own, everything is owned individually. So it's not a territory. I can own a bakery in a neighborhood that is mostly dominant Lucchese or Colombo, not Gambinos. But I'm a Gambino, so I could stay in that neighborhood. You know, but I got to respect the people around me. I'm not going to do the same thing as them. I'm not going to compete with them. So a lot of times you've got a club. You don't want to put a club right on top of another club because you're drawing from the same mm -hmm. crowd of people. So there's no, there's no real boundaries in, the, in New York territories. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you, Sammy. Aussie Wolfhound in the super chat. Sammy, why did the families change their names from their original names? Why did they? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Some people change the names, you know, um, like the Colombo family. Uh, there was an old guy who ran it. I can't think of his name right now. It was a grease bull, and they didn't like him. They hated the him. They hated his name. So when he was dead and gone, and the family was taken over, there was a war between uh, uh, the Gallows and Carmine Persico, and then they put in a boss, they all agreed that Joe Colombo would be a good guy for all sides to keep peace and whatever. And it became the Colombo family. Um, so a lot of them changed it for different reasons. The Gambino family stayed that when, since Carlo took over. Before that, it was different, you know, but when he took over, he changed it. Uh, nice, thank you, Sammy. Ryan Brown, I found your chat. Thank you. Um, Sammy, when someone Shylock's money, is it arbitrary how many points they lend it out for? They could do whatever they want. Um, I, I lent down money for, you know, the, some guys lent down money for five points, small money. Um, and uh, I, I lent down money for three points. When I got money-wise heavier and I got into a heavier position let's say like the underboss I was giving it out for one point because now I'm, it's safe money I'm giving money to a captain who's borrowing he is using my money to make money so the money is very safe every week you're not gonna get hurt 
when you're starting and you got guys who are a degenerate gambler or a guy who's broke all the time, that's dangerous money. You got to chase your money. It's always, you know, it's always a pain in the ass. So you want to make as much on the, on those people, even though they deserve a break, but uh, they're always in trouble. It's risky money. So I even think banks do do that. You know, uh, the, if you have a good credit score, you get money cheaper than you would get it. It's, it's the same, same principle, actually. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Sammy. Um, Ray O in the Super Chat. Hi, Sammy. Did you have any dealings with the Genevieve Skies, Tony Parkside, and Tony Rom from, Rom from Queens? I heard they were serious guys. Thank you, and God bless. Yeah, well, Tony Rome, I heard the name. Um, I, I didn't have anything to do with him, and I don't know the other name. Don't ring a bell with me. So I really, you know, didn't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Elgato, hey, uh, in the Super Chat, while at the Columbos, did you ever meet with Tony Cicero? Who? Tony Cerico? Cerico? Cerico. Cerico. Now that name rings a bell, but I'm I'm not sure. I'm I'm really not sure. Mm -hmm. Give us some more uh, details, Elgato, please, in the chat. Eli Sanchez, what's up from San Antonio, Texas, with a nice weekly envelope for you, Sammy? What's up, bro? Michael J. Campbell Jr. with a weekly envelope for you. No question, no comment. Just a nice little. Thank envelope. Thank you, my friend. Jessica, yes. Also weekly envelope. Jessica, we see you, girl. Thank you so much. Jessica Guess with a weekly envelope. And she says. Fun fact, we share the same birthday, Sammy, March 12th. Um, okay, yeah. Thank oh, you, Jess. I hope, uh, hope you never killed anybody. House <laughs> 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 Pisces are a little crazy, I think. Baltimore's in the chat. Um, Brooklyn is in the chat got a lot a lot a lot of um worldwide people in the chat um brooklyn audit says sammy cheers from bensonhurst brooklyn out here cop watching <laughs> all right all right i think i think i get the cock watch i don't know but bensonhurst brooklyn i love that neighborhood i was born and raised in that neighborhood from a kid uh, I think I was born in Benson Ice Brooklyn, but I loved it uh, there. It's a great, great neighborhood. I got so many good memories from Benson Ice. Um, you know, it was mixed uh, Jewish, Italian, a little bit Irish, a great neighborhood. Now I hear there's a lot of Asian people there. They're good people. You know, they're a little different than us, but they're not violent, so they're not a bad. I think they're a good mix in a neighborhood because they're really not you know violent i i say that like you know i got 22 years in prisons i very rarely came across asian people in prisons and i always say it they either got to be good people or they're really good crooks <laughs> nobody caught them so i don't know thank you sammy frank logan in the super chat what's the story about crazy joe gallo's crew beating up neil de la croce um, I don't think there's any truth to that. Um, I never heard that. Uh, you know, no, I never heard that. Tube lovers, in the super chat, Sammy, did you get pastries from Mona Lisa's Bakery? Yes. What's yes. your favorite pastry? My uh, cannolis, stuff like that. Mona Lisa Bakery is a great, always was, I don't know what it is now, but it always was a great bakery. They were, just great stuff they got great recipes and they always had great stuff nice sammy we have about 10 minutes left oh nine minutes left um you want to tell your viewers about the new uh, michael vecchione video coming out on our thing.tv yeah we we're about to put out some teasers that you know i watched the tease i was blown away it, it's so well done uh, a guy named Angelo and uh, Melissa and people that are working on these things. What a fabulous job. I mean, and the, the story with this Michael Vecchione is mind-blowing. And there's two or three stories in there. Now, he's one of the major guys who was a prosecutor. He's a heavyweight, this guy. And I did an interview with him. And he's the guy who 
debriefed Gas Pipe when he flipped, so he knew every little fact about the murder of Frank and Chico, the bombing, who gave orders, who did everything. It was amazing to, to sit and talk with this guy. Then he heard uh, some stories that are just earth shattering. I mean, when this comes out, you watch this, you've never seen anything like this in your life. Yeah, that, that teaser was incredible. Yeah, the teasers are incredible. Ooh. They really did. Melissa and Angelo did a tremendous job. I think he talked to, he's talking about Scarpa too. Who? Um, Michael. Oh, yeah, Michael yeah. Oh, he's talking about all kinds of about the guys. He's t- they're taking bones. They're doing this. I mean, in, uh, the investigations that this guy had and talked to me about uh, are just amazing. It gave me the chills. Mm-hmm. And I don't get the chills too often unless it's below zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Where's Betty Ann? Betty Ann, you were MIA this week, girl. We don't see you in the chat. Yeah, she's in there. Someone's she's there. A- hey. Oh, she's there? I didn't yeah, see her. Hi, Betty Ann. <laughs> um, King Man Civic in the super chat. I love listening to you every week and enjoy your website. Have you ever had any involvement with the Chinese gangs in Chinatown? Well, yeah, they they had a lot to do with a lot of guys. It was very, they, you know, they, the Chinese people were very big in gambling, betting, gambling, and some of those, you know, uh, Chinatown right there, right off the Italian neighborhood, um, they had some big games in basements. Sometimes they were hooked up with Italians. Um, I... I did time with the guy Johnny Khan, who was, I don't know, if you come over the bridge, there's a huge building and it has this Chinese sign on it. He owned that building. He was one of the biggest drug dealers in the country. I did some time with him, um, and uh, I got along really, really good. You know, I'll tell you a story. I was playing cards with him in, in, the, in the prison one time, and um, he didn't like John Gotti. John said something. He didn't like him. So we were playing cards, and he told me he didn't like him. I said, well, that's your opinion. He's my boss. I don't want to talk about it. He said, Sammy, he was told by a guy who they called the prince or something like that in China. He lives in the mountains, this guy. He's got his own army and everything. He told Johnny Khan to cooperate so he can get out and he could bring him over there and live over there forever. And uh, he told me, he said, Sammy, I think the world of you. If you get out, you come up there with me, you, you run away or whatever you want to do, and you, you'll be taken care of for the rest of your life. He said, John Gotti, he comes up there and never comes back. In other words, he would kill him. And one day I was talking to him and he was really, really mad, this Johnny Khan. So I said, what what happened? What's the matter? He said, the government is no good. He said, they arrested my wife this morning. Yeah. And, you know, well, maybe she'll beat the case. He says, and you know what else they did? What? They arrested my girlfriend. The two of them at the same time. And they were in the same case. They're fighting. They want to kill each other. (laughs) So I said, that's the government, bro. They're horrible. So I I did have some contact with some Chinese guys, especially Johnny Khan. He was a funny bastard. He made me laugh all the time. So, uh, but he was a tough bastard and a ton of money. And I, I must have got out. And he probably took off and he's in the mountains and I don't know where in China, Mm -hmm. somewhere. So. What was his name? Johnny Khan. Johnny Khan. That's cool. Very cool. Um, JB Weld in the super chat. Can you tell us about Norman from the Hangout? I heard he's in jail now. How did he get involved? Norman, um, the the guy in the apartment above the club, John's club. He was a May guy. That was Norman's uncle. Or. His wife was the aunt, one or the other. He died, and John started using the apartment from the old lady. Draw her a few dollars, he would take it for the meetings. And uh, he normally would go up, tell his aunt, you know, 
go shopping or whatever. Here, put this money in your pocket. She would go shopping, and John, I went there a couple of times, but I never really talked much in there when I was there with him and Frankie. But one day and a couple of times, he was there in there alone with Frankie, and he talked about everything. That's how we got arrested. There was a bug. The, the FBI figured out where, why is his voice disappearing? That a bug in the club, that a bug in the hall. He's walking out. They could hear his footsteps going upstairs. Where did he go? They realized that the guy, the maid guy, died. They figured it was going right, and Norman was related to that woman. They figured he was going there. They bugged the house. And John got, that's where he got caught with Frank Lucasio on tape. I wasn't on those tapes, obviously, it was talking about me. Um, and that's part of the place where he was planning to kill me. He was making Frankie go around to other captains and tell them, Sammy lost his mind, he's killing his partners, he's taking over business, he's killing union guys, he's taking over the unions. He's, he lost his mind, he's killing everybody, which wasn't true. But you can't just kill your underboss. You, you create a problem for yourself that's unbelievable. And I, got a, I had a lot of guys loyal to me. So he was trying to make it that people understood that I became a mad dog killer. And then at the end, which I found out really later in prison, is that he had given me a contract to kill Chin, telling me that Chin was the guy with Frankie DeChico. Knew I loved Frankie. I took the contract with bells on it. I wanted to go kill him. Uh, an indictment was coming out, he called off the head. And his plan was a genius in a way. He spread all these bullshit rumors about me, and then I would kill Chin. I would come back the next day or the same night. How'd you make out? He's dead. And he would kill me. And then he would tell the family, I love the guy, I had to kill him, he lost his mind, you know all the people he was killing, now he killed Chen, a boss, how to kill him. He could have got the Genovese family, backed somebody to go in, Sammy did it, we killed him, and he makes real peace, beautiful peace with the Genovese, and he gets away with, it without, with our family. And um, it's a brilliant, scummy plan, but it's a brilliant plan. The only thing is it didn't work. We got caught. All the tapes came out, and that's maybe where a judge gets involved, and everybody gets involved, government gets involved, and everybody starts knowing the story of what was going on. But I didn't flip because of that. I flipped f for the other reason I had said. Um, what I should have did is kill him in prison. But I really didn't have that opportunity. It's not that easy to do. Um, especially I was on uh, 11 South, and he was on 11 North. We are in two separate areas. So uh, by the time all of this stuff came out, and uh, we did have a plan uh, to kill uh, him when he got out, me and Frankie. Uh, Frankie hated him, too. I don't know why Frankie didn't flip. But he stood up, and I give him credit for that, he stood up. But he got sold out. You know, there was a lawyer who's now talking about me, this fucking lawyer, but a lawyer who was threatened by John when I was taking the stand that he couldn't ask me certain questions and do something because it would help Frankie and it would hurt him. So, and then this all came out in an interview with uh, Jerry Capisi. Long stories, they're long stories, but they're there, they're factual. There's a lot of evidence about it. And uh, so there's people bullshitting that's not true. They'll probably say it again, it's not true. But, um, you know, and uh, why don't I answer the, these things, allegations? It's like a fucking fly. I want to get, I want to, I fly. Fuck people like this. I don't even answer them. So, um... 
Yeah, I remember you were in a meeting with a pretty big, pretty damn big studio, and uh, one of the guys was actually um, one of the heads of the Sopranos show, and he said, my first question to you, Sammy, and because we, we had FBI, uh, ex-FBI, F- ex-FBI agents as consultants on the show, because they were trying to make it as authentic as possible, and one of the stories was... Um, did you that you had found one of the vans with all the surveillance inside and you went up and like knocked on the window and yeah you know what happened we're always aware of this bugs and mm-hmm. this stuff so me john and frankie lacasio we went and take a walk it was something serious and a place where we didn't normally walk so we went out of the club we went to the corner we turned we went straight up across the avenue to another street which we were never never on so we feel you know we're pretty safe and we're walking and then we turn around it's probably a long walk and then on the way back we're walking and i see a van and I see the little smoke coming out of the van. The window is set up in a weird way. And I'm watching a hit, and you know, I'm, I'm always got my eyes open to protect him and me and Frankie. And it just struck me that way. So as we're walking by, I looked in out of the corner of my eye, and they had this small little computer or whatever it was, a face, television, whatever it was. And there's me. John and Frankie walking on television. So I, we walk a little bit more. I said, oh, hold up, hold up. I said, John, when we just passed this van, I said, uh, we were on fucking TV. I don't know how the fuck are we on TV. Live, like we are right now, walking, dressed like we are right now. It's not an old show or nothing. Are you kidding? No. I said, come on. We turned around. <laughs> Frankie Lucasio went to the van and started banging on the side of the van. I went right to the window. There was a guy sitting in there. And the guy opens up the window. Hey, hey, FBI, FBI, this is very sophisticated equipment. Relax, relax. You got another guy's from the back. I see he's going for a gun. <laughs> it's an FBI guy. So I, then they just closed the window and they took off. We later found out that that was the, what did they forgot those uh, satellite? things? Satellite. Satellite dish following us on live on TV watching us. I said, wow, they ain't got such a hard on for us, bro. They, they're, doing, they're taking out all the stops to, to catch us, bro. You know, so, but that, that was a crazy, crazy story, and that's how it worked out. Listen, I was sitting in the club one time, like I'm sitting now, and just like my legs are down, and I moved a little bit, and I feel something rocking back and forth and hitting me in the, in the, the ankle. So I said, what the fuck is that? So they're talking, John is talking, I get up off the chair, and, and I look, and there's a wire hanging. So I picked the chair up, and I said, oh, John, everybody stops talking, everybody. And I said, I point down, and I show him. And it, what's that? I, in other words, a bug, a wire. So we decided to push it and leave it there, right? But now, when we were talking, we were smart about it. And George Gabriel, an agent, told me, says, we almost blew the case for what you did. Because John asked me, I think it was John asking me, um, Sammy, what? Now, I know I'm talking right into a mic. He says, who do you think killed Castellano? And I said, I think it was the government. You know, he became so powerful. I think the government killed him. They had enough of him. They couldn't get him, so they killed him. Bro, you know how, how we go to the CIA. This is, they do the same shit. So guaranteed it was the government. So now how do you take that tape and use it in court? We think we're safe. John is asking me about it. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm thinking it's the government. So how does a jury look at that? You know, the jury will say, well, they think they're safe, and they're confused on who killed them. So how could you arrest them? It can't be them. So that case, that tape almost wrecked their whole fucking case. 
Wow, I never heard that one before. Yeah, yeah, that's and that and there's George Gabriel, there's people who are alive. George Gabriel said, well, you, that fucking thing drove us crazy, Sammy. And he's dead. I told because after I cooperated, I said I did that on purpose. We found the bug. He said, "You fucking snake." <laughs> That's awesome. Um, we're a little over time, but I'm gonna just jump up in these super chats. Um, Eli Sanchez again in the super chat. Sammy, how old was Nikki Russo and Pell Joey when you hit Johnny Keys? Oh, they were up in age. They were in their upper 60s. They were like Johnny Keyes' age, upper 60s, maybe close to 70. They were up in age. They were way older than me. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Betty Ann with a weekly envelope. I see you, girl. Thank She's you. She's on a rocket flying around in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Betty Ann. Vinny Detroit. In the super chat, much love and respect to you and your team, Sammy. God bless. Same, same goes to you and everybody else on this, you know, program. You know, I, you know, I enjoy this. Last week, I had, a, I, I went a little crazy with the. the the way the country is going, I was complaining about things, and I got a lot of uh, text messages. Um, I should be the president. I should be this. I should be that. You know, and uh, I agree. If uh, Joe Biden could be the president, I think I could be the president. And uh, but I think I could do a better job. You know why? One reason, not that I'm smarter than them or anything like that. I think I am, but. I care about the people more than they do. The things that are going on is crazy. And then, you know, watching him, I don't remember what it was. I think I was telling you, Anna. Mm -hmm. I turned around and I was walking and uh, oh, I went to a club. And I went into the men's room and I come out of the men's room and there's a door that went into the hall. Now, all of a sudden, I'm in the hall. How am I in the hall? I open up the other door, and I'm in the kitchen of the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I felt like Joe Biden. I was lost. I saw a, a woman came up. You can't stay in the kitchen. No, I know. I says, where you come from? And I came from the bathroom. No, you should, when you go in the hall, you got to go the other way. And, and this other woman is holding my arm like I'm an old man. She's holding my arm. <laughs> no, I take you. I take you. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was crazy. I've never seen you face plant like Biden on the stage. Lord. Bring dad home already. Jesus. Good Lord. Um, we have a super chat from Cheryl. Hi, Sammy. This is Charlie and Cheryl, and this is our first time catching you on a live. You are the best. Thank you, uh, Charlie and Cheryl. I appreciate it. You guys are the best. And Bill Curtis. Can my daughter, Emma Curtis, get a shout out from Boston, please? What's her name, Emma? Emma? Emma Curtis. Emma Curtis. Shout out to you, baby. Guys, Sammy's going to start putting together a new show, and he is going to start either confirming or dispelling these mafia movies. So like, like he just talked about, um, the people that were on The Sopranos actually used one of his stories for their for their lines, for their storylines on Sopranos. So he's the real deal. You guys all know that. You guys love Sammy. That's why you're here. But um, put in the chat the different movies you'd like to see Sammy review and right. confirm or dispel the truth. So, yeah. We'd you know, love I'm going to gonna spend it. time looking at some of these movies again, and I'm going to slowly make comments where I think it's wrong or this didn't happen or that it did happen this way. And if you, you know, send in whatever movie you want to watch, um, I, I, I must have picked about, well, Anna did about 10 Mafia movies already, and we'll look into these things. Even uh, one, of, one of them I think is going to be fun, My Blue Heaven, so I'm going to watch that again. I watched it a long time ago, but I'm going to watch it again, and I'll comment about it, and we'll have some fun with it. So... Uh, and uh, that's about it for right now and today. So all you guys, I love you. Adios, motherfuckers.
and like, like and subscribe. Like. Everybody like. Gotta like and like and subscribe. Like, like, like. And it won't they won't let me go away if you if you don't <laughs> start <laughs> singing. <laughs> start singing. Yeah, Ricardo. <laughs> We're almost at 500. Oh, that's five hundred. There's a thousand people in the chat, and we only got five hundred likes. Sammy, what are you gonna do about that? Oh, people are telling you to sing, Sammy. It's Everybody loves somebody <laughs> sometime. I love it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was watching somebody, you know, I, I watched the thing on Hulu uh, about a guy named uh, Jelly Roll. And um, what made me watch it is this guy is, uh, he's doing, he raps country and western rock, all of this shit. But um, he was a drug addict. His mother was a drug addict. And uh, you know I'm caring about that. And uh, so I watched the whole thing and how he made a comeback in life through music and through different things. And um, he's going to come and do a show here, I think in September. And I'm going to try and reach him. I would love to talk to this guy. Um, I watched the, the, the YouTube thing on him. Go to YouTube, uh, not YouTube, uh, Hulu, and look up Jelly Belly. It's going to be weird the first five, six, seven minutes, eight minutes. You're going to love it. I, My son gave it to me. I was looking at it, and I said, first five minutes, I almost closed it. And then I stayed a little longer, and then I fell in love with it. The guy bought me. He bought me that. He told about drugs, the existence, the problems, everything. I mean, it, it really blew me away. He really, really did. If you guys want to watch that, and um, here's another thing I'll give you that he, in the past couple of months, he, he got a hundred and something million fucking views. So he's not a joke, and he fights for people, addicts and stuff. There's room for a second chance. There's room for these things. And uh, so I'm going to get in touch with him if I can um, and talk to him about it because I would like to be able to have him help me. He'll help other people. I, and if he can't help me, I would like to help him to, to do something because he's building a great organization and a great, great following. And it's not only drug addicts, it's so many people today with problems, married couples, all kinds of things, the economy, money, broke, this, that, and the other thing. Um, it's incredible. So I still have all of that in mind. Uh, I'm working on things that I'm going to do uh, on my website, and I'm going to continue all of these things and a lot more. It's going to take a little time. Be patient. I noticed today a couple of people dropped off the station. Don't drop off the station. Hang there. Play with me. Stay with me. Support me. Support everything we're fighting for. If you drop off for four ninety nine, you're hurting everybody. We got to stick together. It, that's the key. What we're doing now, like you could hear my voice. I'm working so hard I can't even, it's, I could hardly talk. I have like, it's not the cigar. It's, I'm working so many hours. Me and Anna went to uh, another deal. I'm not going to discuss what it is. We went to uh, uh, Tucson. I got up at 5.30 in the morning. I got back. They made a dinner appointment for me and Anna. We went. We came back. The both of us were shot. We, I went to bed. I don't know what time she went to bed. I went to bed 11.30. Mm -hmm. That's fucking 18 hours straight without a nap. I'm 78. And that's what my voice is. So stay on. Join our website. We're going to do fantastic things. The more people we have, the better it's going to be. It's not about money, but I'm going to take that money that I earn and I'm going to use it in different ways to support different programs, all kinds of different things. But it's going to take me a little time. And it's going to take that I have the support of you guys. So I hope that this is what I'm saying now. The 500 went to six. How no? many do we have, Ricardo? El Gato said if you sing, he'll hit the like button. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. And somebody else said, treat me like a fool, gabba gabba ghoul. That's about 500. 475. 
475, Sammy. Okay, so we're not, we're, we're almost at, we're not even at five. And, and you, you're gonna press the like button if I say? I've already, I've already pressed it. Oh, all right, because I was gonna say, if you don't press the fucking thing, I'm firing you. <laughs> I'm not singing. <laughs> Richard C. in the super chat. Sammy, I wish you could run for office. You would clean house. Blessings to you for a long life. <laughs> I would definitely clean house. I mean, because I'm up in age, and that's the only thing I really want to do is leave a legacy that, I mean, I have a legacy of everything. I, I don't walk away from it. I'm not ashamed of, it, of myself or anything. Um, and I put it on the table. And I tell the truth, whether you like me or you don't. But if I ran for office, I would love to. Then they'll never allow me because I'll shake the shit out. If you think Trump shook the shit out of things, I would go after everything. What they're doing is criminal, criminal. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a friend of mine, a close friend of mine. Um, listen to this little tiny story. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say their names because it's private, it's medical. Um, this woman tells me her daughter got blood clots and uh, went to the hospital. She's a nurse. So uh, I got concerned and I called her back and how'd she make out? Well, they said that you can get the blood clots because of birth control pills. Well, when I was talking to the kid was there and how long, you, you know, I don't want to ask you your business, but how long were you on birth, this birth control? Eight years. Did you ever get blood clots or any problems? No. How long ago did you get these shots? Maybe a year and a half. You got them all, including the, the booster and everything? Yeah. I went to my doctor and I told him that story. Is it likely that you could take birth control for eight fucking years and not have a problem? Eight years later, you get blood clots? The first thing he asked me is, when did she get the shots? In a year and a half. That's the shots. It's the sh he says, Sammy, there's so much fucking lying going on with the shots and everything else. He says to me, listen, I hear it. I'm a doctor. They're talking about another pandemic. Now, you, how do you talk about another pandemic that's going to come out that didn't come out? How are you, Houdini? How do you know we're going to have a pandemic? Before it even happens, not one person is sick with this new pandemic. So what are you, making it? How is it, how is it, you know, three months, six months in advance? That, that, that's another thing that just don't make sense to me. I know one thing, if there's another pandemic that comes out, I'm going to say, these people are predicting it. They're making it. They're giving you the cure. Is this all about money? Uh, for these shots? They made trillions of dollars. Trillions. You know, I, and I always say it, you know, a lot of people don't like the mob. They talk bad about the mob. We're like Boy Scouts compared to them. These are people getting people sick or people dying in the millions for money, for money. So, I don't know. And the more support I get, I'm gonna talk about these things on my website. I'm gonna try and build organizations that will help fight these things. So it's not for the money. I need the organizational people behind me. Otherwise, my voice is a little shaky with them. You got. 10,000 people, 20,000, 100,000 people. You got a million people, two million people. People start listening. You can make changes, you could do things. You know, now they're talking about the last thing I heard with this thing, taking away cash. Now, I don't know what you've heard. I heard it, I'm talking with a, a, a lot of, like Patrick Big David. These guys are connected all over the place. And uh, they're talking about July, they might do it. We may take away the cash in July, and we go on this new system. So I'm saying it now. Say, hey, uh, don't don't pay me no mind. In July, if that happens, 
So they said he was right. So watch watch what's going on around you in the country. Stay safe. You know, put some things. You got some extra money. Put some things away. Batteries, flashlights, little generator things. Because, I mean, it could go bad. I'm not worried about World War Three. I'm worried about what they're doing here. We're, we're, we're being attacked from within. Don't worry about Russia. This thing with Ukraine is insane. Now, it's gotten to insane. What was the last thing that I just heard? Um, that, oh, that in Mexico, they had these little launch things that could shoot these missiles like on their shoulder. They got a picture of it. It was on a Chinese, uh, it was on the Mexican news with an American news commentator talking about it as well. So they're selling some of the stuff we send them. They're selling it on the black market. The number is supposedly between cash and equipment is exceeding $200 billion that we're sending there to Ukraine. They're never going to beat Russia. This whole thing is a fucking scam. The president over there of you, you, uh, Ukraine, I heard he's buying fucking houses and stash of money like it was going out of style. That's our money. When are we going to wake up? And on the, on the top, the politicians, you have to notice you're allowing it. We're going to do a lot of things on our website if I can get this going, and I think I will. And we're going to increase our team when, when we get this going. So the money is a beautiful thing. If I can get it, that's where it's going. It ain't going in my pocket. You ain't, I'm no John Gotti. You're not going to see me with all kinds of fancy shit. I'm putting it back into what we're going to do, how we're going to help one another, how we're going to be one. You know, I got I go to the gym. I got two or three black guys in the gym who became friends of mine to come over to me and talk to me while I'm in this fucking jacuzzi about, you know, racism. And this is all bullshit, Sammy. I said, you're telling me. I know. I got a biracial granddaughter. It's, it's all bullshit. It's meant to keep us fighting while they're doing things. That's that's all it is. And, and he, they're doing it. They're telling me. So, and then uh, white people are bad. And then the guy wants to take a, 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 a selfie with me. Big black guy. In a fucking jacuzzi, we're half naked, bro. I'm not taking no fucking <laughs> selfie with you. <laughs> when we get out of the fucking thing and we get dressed, I mean, I have a bathing suit on, but we, it's not gonna look like that <laughs> standing in the pool. So anyway, that's it, guys. I love you guys. I got as you know as many self uh, as many uh, like, like. likes as possible. Subscribers is another big thing. How's it? He's looking over here. Over here. What How happened? many you got? 530. Oh, that was good. We have some. We're good yeah. now. We're good now. All right, guys. Again, adios, motherfuckers. <laughs>